All right, so in this video, we have a pair of Air Jordans that honestly I was surprised seeing in select sizes on Hibbit City Gear's site. I reached out to them. They actually sent this pair over and are sponsoring this video uh, as they are a long-term sponsor of the channel. And I appreciate everybody watching these videos. And in fact, if you see any sneakers on Hibbit's website that you guys want to see me review, uh, reach out and leave a comment in the comment section and it's something that I can try to get those sneakers potentially for future videos. But this is one that I was like, dude, they, they actually have my size available and I really like this release and you know the way that the sneaker fatigue has been in the last handful of months it feels like sneakers are just releasing and then I honestly don't even remember that they release like this is one of those shoes I was like dude I've been waiting for this one to drop and I didn't even know it actually uh, ended up dropping so now I have a pair of them super stoked about that and the box says this is the Air Jordan 3 light or wood brown metallic gold and oddly enough it doesn't say anything about the colorway Palomino on the box which is what this sneaker's actually been dubbed Palomino and I didn't realize what that was I just assumed it was a shade of brown but I guess it's a reference to a certain type of horse so didn't know that also, there is the Air Jordan 1s and the Palomino colorway coming out soon, and I've been eyeballing those ones since the very first images of those. So those come out, I think, in September, and I'm definitely hoping I get a pair of those. Really like that colorway. But this is, I guess, the Palomino Air Jordan 3. The images of the shoe, I was like, okay, I, I definitely like this colorway. And you can't see it, but behind me, there's actually a whole row of cream and brown sneakers. So, and I've always wanted, like, Jordan Brown to be making more fall-colored sneakers. Like, the Mocha 3s are, like, a classic. So this is a really nice alternative to something like a Mocha 3, as well as, like, the Ama Manier Air Jordan 3s, which also has that sort of like fall-esque sort of vibes to it, in my opinion, at least. And just for reference, here's the Mocha Air Jordan 3s. I really like this one. This is like the classic colorway that they retroed the other year, and I'm super stoked about that one. And then also one of the, the best ones that dropped that year, this is the Amon Manier Air Jordan 3s. Uh, really, really nice premium uh, look and feel to this one. And they went away with the elephant print on this one. So a lot of people maybe like or dislike the fact that they did that. Uh, obviously the Air Jordan 3s and the Mochas have the elephant print. So I feel like this is a really great option for the feet. The color blocking is great. They have a bunch of different variations of colors of browns and tans. And then you do have the two-tone elephant print uh, as well that I really like. But before I dig deeper into the sneakers, if you haven't heard of Hibbit City Gear before, check the link in the description. It'll take you over to their website. Their website is really polished. You can sort by shoes, size, color, gender, brand, all those different things. And then it can give you like kind of a tailored list of what they have available uh, in your size run. Also, they have a really nice release calendar. I'll let you guys know of all the future things that are gonna be coming out uh, from the major brands like Nike, Jordan, Adidas, New Balance, and more. Check them out. Again, link in the description and thank you to them for sponsoring this video. So some of the details about the shoe that I really like, obviously you have kind of that off-white uh, ask midsole and then you do have the like chocolate brown color around the back part of the painted section here and as I mentioned the two tones of the elephant print and I like that they went with the darker one for the little veins of the elephant print uh, and then just kind of like the lighter color over top for the mochas as an example it's pretty much just one color and this one being two different colors it kind of ties together the rest of the sneaker to be honest and then the upper of the shoe is done in that light or wood colorway and I like the fact that they did the entire thing in that kind of cracked suede or whatever this is versus some of the craft Air Jordan sneakers. Half of the shoe is done in like the crack material or then suede. And it's kind of weird the way they segmented some of the, the craft models. And then this one, it's pretty much the same uh, all the way through the upper of the shoe, which I, I do appreciate. You also do have cream on the back tab of the shoe. And then gold uh, Jumpman back here with the Jumpman Air. And some people don't like the Jumpman on the back of the shoes. They just prefer the Nike Air. Personally, I mean like the Nike Air branding here, you have the Jumpman branding here on the Mochas. Um, it, it is what it is. Like, honestly, it's not that big of a deal to have the Jumpman on the back. The Nike Airs are true to the originals from the 88s, but then any retros after that, like the Mochas, didn't have a Nike Air on the back. It just had a Jumpman on it. So it doesn't make sense to put a Nike Air branding on a retro shoe if it's not an original colorway, for the most part, in my opinion. Uh, but it is what it is. I mean, honestly, uh, people love and hate it. And at the end of the day, I don't mind the Jumpman. Around the collar of the shoe, you have some perforated material and that feels like a synthetic material. And then also on the tongue, you have that same sort of synthetic material. Uh, so it is the same color there. I kind of like that. And then you have gold stitching for the Jumpman on the tongue. And this is not like a really crazy goldy gold. It's kind of more of like a mustard gold, which kind of blends together in the shoe a little bit better. I personally don't mind it at all. You do have brown around the collar of the shoe and then also for the eyelets uh, as well. And then gold or the mustard gold with the lower eyelets on the bottom of the shoe. And uh, this is always interesting to me how there's always five holes down there. Obviously you can lace it so many different ways, but usually we only use the top holes. The insole of the shoe is interesting. I don't know why they have the Air Jordan Flight Club on the bottom instead of just the regular little jump man like what we normally see. Uh, if you guys know, leave a comment in the comment section. I don't know what makes this that much different considering it's just a regular inline shoe. It didn't have like any sort of collaboration or any sort of 
uh, reasoning, I guess, why they uh, they put that in there. Very interesting. As you move your way to the outsole, you do have three different colors of brown. Kind of, again, ties everything together uh, on the shoe. I think the overall execution of what they did here is pretty good. I mean, I really like the colorway. Again, I think it's a very wearable colorway. And we're coming into the fall season. Pretty much one of my favorite seasons. Actually, I, I really like all seasons. We had this question amongst our family the other day of, like, which is our favorite season? Honestly, I really like winter. But I do like uh, the browns and the creams. And I think for a long while there, there was a lack of, like, brown offerings for sneakers in general, Air Jordan specifically. I mean, we had the Mochas, we had Cinder Air Jordan 14s, and a couple other ones here and there. But nowadays, you have the Travis Scotts in the brown colorways. You have the Imam Meniers with kind of the earth tones. And Kanye went nuts with all the different earth tones of the 350 V2s and stuff uh, on the Adidas front. So there's tons of different offerings out there with uh, earth tones on them and I'm, I'm there for it. I, I personally just really like it. Leave a comment in the comment section. What do you guys think about this colorway? And why do you guys think that these are sitting around in select sizes all over the place? Personally, I think it's because again, sneaker fatigue, the fact that there is so many pairs on the market, so many different releases happening. You just lose track of which ones are coming out. Price points elevated to 210 instead of like a buck 90. Personally, they should still be 190 in my opinion. And in fact, I think that some of them sitting around and not selling out is not a bad thing. That just gives you the opportunity if you really like the shoe to potentially get it for that 190 price point when they go on sale or maybe even 170, it just depends. But eventually some of the shoes that are higher in price uh, get discounted if they sit around long enough. So uh, that is uh, the silver lining to it all for the consumers out there. Ultimately, we end up winning if there's actually a product out there that we really like and we can finally get again when it goes on sale. But anyways, thanks for stopping by and watching the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And again, if you guys want to shop at Hibbit City Gear, check the links in the description to get over their website. And I appreciate you all for stopping by. Drop a like on the video or subscribe or both. And hopefully we'll see you back for some more videos. All right, peace guys.